use measurement data represented in a line plot to solve problems. Let's find out. Bruce measured the daily rainfall while working in Costa Rica. His line plot shows the rainfall for each day in September. What was the total rainfall for the month? What kinds of questions can you ask about the data in the line plot? Here are some possible questions. What was the total amount of rain for the month? What is the difference between the greatest and least amounts of rain? You can use the line plot to make a frequency table. The frequency table helps you organize the numerical data for your calculations. Multiply each value by the frequency to find the amount of rain for that value. Why do you find 5 times 1 fourth inch? So on this one, if you notice, 1 fourth inch happens 5 times. So you're going to be taking 1 fourth times 5 to figure out what that total amount would be. There are five days that each had one fourth inch of rain. How can you find the total number of inches of rainfall for the month? So now, Select your answer. if you're trying to find the total amount of rainfall for the entire month, um, so what they've done is they've taken the amount of rainfall, multiplied it by the frequency to get the amount, that total amount, and they've done it for each of the um, different inches. So to find the, the total amount for the entire month, we're not necessarily just adding together the inches that it rained, but you also wanna take into consideration the frequency that it actually rained that amount. Um, so then you would wanna make sure that you're taking these totals um, that you have um, after multiplying and adding those together. So this one right here at the bottom, this is going to be us taking all of the totals and adding them together. Add the products to find the number of inches of rainfall for the month. The total rainfall was 13 and 5 eighths inches. Now you know how to use measurement data represented in a line plot to solve problems. Hi ladies, um, today is April 24th, um, and we are on week three, day five of our packet. Um, so you should be on page 40 and 41 today for our lesson. Um, so today we're focusing on our learning target, which is I can solve problems using data in a line plot. Um, and today we're kind of building on what we've done the last few days. Um, so we focus kind of on displaying data, reading data, um, and now we're kind of putting that together to solve actual problems um, using that data in a line plot. Um, so today we're, um, we're going to kind of focus more on that reading the data and using some different um, computations um, with the line plot using fractions and mixed numbers um, as well as whole numbers. Um, and um, this is really important because we've, we're going to be kind of building on the things that we've done in the past. Um, so really being able to kind of read the line plot is going to be um, crucial for this lesson, um, as well as really knowing what numbers are even on um, the number line itself, because sometimes the dashes don't actually have a, um, a digit below it. Um, so it's really important that you're kind of paying attention and really focusing on what number is below on the line uh, itself. All right, so today our learning target is I can solve problems using data in a line plot. And remember, data is just kind of that information that's collected about something. Um, so you'll notice on number one, we're focusing on the data of salt um, left. And our unit that we're focusing on today is going to be grams. Um, so on questions one through four, we're going to use the line plot showing how many grams of salt were left after liquids in various containers evaporated. Um, 
So remember, anytime that we have a line plot, we want to make sure that we have that title and then we have our unit. Um, and then remember, um, we always want to start with the smallest amount um, or an amount that's smaller than the smallest amount and then make sure we either end with the largest amount or a number that's a little bit larger so that all of those amounts can fit um, on our line plot. All right, so let's go ahead and get started today. Um, we're going to be looking at numbers one through four together on page 40. So take a look at number one. It says, how could you find the difference between the greatest amount and the least amount of salt? So something that's really important right now to focus on are some of those clue words. Um, and one of the clue words that I'm noticing is this word difference. How could you find the difference between the greatest amount and the least amount of salt left? Um, and if we're thinking about the greatest and the least, it's not necessarily what amount had the most. Um, so we're not necessarily focusing on those dots, um, but we are focusing on the numbers that do have dots above them. So if you're looking at these um, different quantities, we have a one and then we have a number all the way to, um, to seven. Um, and it's really important that we're really focusing on only the numbers that have dots above them, um, starting with that, that greatest amount, so we want to look at these digits along the bottom. And if we notice, the seven is the largest quantity that has a digit above it. Um, so that's going to be kind of that number that we start with. We want to really focus on that seven, which is our greatest quantity. And then all the way down here is going to be the least amount of salt left. Um, and although it has the most above it, it really doesn't matter at this point, as long as this has at least one dot above it. Um, and then we want to think about in between one and two, what would that um, quantity be? Um, and there's only one spot and there's two locations. So this means that um, in between one and two would be one and one half. Um, but in order to find the difference of something, we know that we want to focus on the operation of subtraction um, because that's how we're going to find the difference. Um, and in order to find the difference, we want to subtract the value under the dots farthest to the left. from the value under the dots farthest to the right. And what that means is you're basically taking um, this value right here, which is one and a half, and we're subtracting it from this value of seven um, so how that really would look would be seven minus one half. Um, we're not necessarily solving that at this very moment, um, but we are looking at this problem to really kind of notice like we're taking this largest amount that has dots and we're subtracting it from this smallest amount that has dots. All right, number two, it says, write a problem that can be um, answered using the line plot. Um, and this problem is going to be kind of difficult for me to obviously check on your own paper, but um, I would really kind of think about how we could look at this line plot and come up with a question. So I'm going to just kind of pose a question to you. Um, and one thing that we could do is say, um, you know, how many um, more um, grams of salt um, are there in one and one half than there are in four um, or you know kind of looking at even something similar to this question what is the um, you know what is the total amount of um, salt that was left 
um, what or how many, you could even say how many um, grams of salt are left that were less than um, five grams. Um, so that's something that we would kind of look at in this area. So we would see five, and then we could go um, go back from that. Um, or how many, um, how many containers of salt are left that were less than five grams. Um, so this, you're kind of focusing more on the dots and less on the actual quantities. Um, so then you would just kind of have to add up the dots. So there's a lot of different um, options for creating a word problem. Um, and feel free to bring your word problem to our Zoom meeting on Tuesday. Um, this might be a really great way to kind of share out our thoughts for number two. Um, or if you have any questions about this one, reach out and I'd be more than happy to give you some feedback on that question. Um, but you can, you can write any sort of question that focuses on the dots themselves or on the quantities of the dots. So, you know, what is the total um, amount of salt left in, um, in all? Um, you know, there are three dot or three containers that contain six and a half um, grams of salt. What is the total? Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can answer this question. So just kind of use your imagination, use those dots, um, use the quantities, and you'll do great. So let's look at number three. It says write and solve an equation that represents the total number of grams of salt left. Um, so on this one, we're focusing on the total grams of salt. All right. So when we're doing that, we're focusing on how many dots there are above each um, quantity. Um, and this is where we want to make sure we're using our order of operations and using um, parentheses to um, solve these different problems. Um, so the first thing that we are focusing on right here is in this um, little dash, we said that this represents um, one and one half. Let's see if I need to change this. One and one half. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that one and one half, and we're actually going to be multiplying it times how many dots there are. Um, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots, which means we want to multiply this by seven. Um, and we also want to make sure that we're putting these in parentheses so we know that those numbers go together. So after we do that, we're going to take that amount and we're going to add it to the next set of dots. Um, so now we have our four. So our four is going to go here. Um, and we're going to multiply that by how many dots there are, which are two dots. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add that amount to our next portion, um, which is going to be above. In, so we're in between the six and the seven, which would be six and a half. Um, we're going to take six and one half, and we're going to be multiplying that times how many dots, which is three. And then we're going to do our end parenthesis. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add that amount to our last set of numbers, which is seven. Um, and we're going to multiply that seven times how many dots there are, which is five. Um, and then this is going to equal um, a variable. So we don't know exactly what it is right now, so we're going to use a variable, and I'm going to do um, G for grams of salt. So now what we want to do is we want to actually solve this out. All right? Um, and I can go through and kind of look at some of these on their own. Um, and see that we have eight here, and we have seven times five, which is 35. Um, so I can even start with that and do my eight plus my 35. Um, and then I also want to make sure that I'm adding these in as well. 
Um, so right now, I still kind of have this quantity that I'm looking at, and then I also have this quantity that I'm looking at um, in order to get my answer. So right now, we want to focus on 1 and 1 half times 7. And we know when we're multiplying um, a mixed number times a whole number, that mixed number um, needs to become a improper fraction. And how we do that is we're going to be taking our denominator and multiplying it by our whole number and then adding the numerator. So 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So this would actually be equal to 3 halves. So we're going to be taking 3 halves and we're going to be multiplying that um, times 7. And remember, we want to take that 7 and put it over 1. So taking our numerators, 3 times 7 is going to be 21. And then our denominator, 2 times 1, which is 2. Um, so right here, we have 21 over 2, which we can turn into um, a mixed or an improper, a mixed number. Um, so 2 goes into 21 10 times. 2 times 10 is 20. Um, and then we have 1 half left over. So that's going to be a lot easier to add to our quantity here. Um, so I'm going to add that in, 10 and 1 half. Um, and then over here, we have 6 and a half times 3. So 6 and 1 half is going to become um, an improper fraction. So taking 2 times 6, so 2 times 6 um, gave me 12, plus 1 is 13. My denominator is 2, and that stays the same. Um, and then we're going to turn that also into a mixed number to add back in. Um, so 2 goes into 13. Oh, just kidding. We have to multiply. We're going to multiply that by 3. So 13 over 2 times 3, and remember we want to put that over 1. So multiplying um, 13 times 3 is going to give us, um, let me do that, 13 times 3 is 39. And then we're going to take 2 times 1, our denominators, so it's going to be 39 over 2. So we want to ask ourselves, how many times can 2 go into 39? So 39 divided by 2. Um, so 2 goes into um, 40, 10, um, 20 times. Um, so 2 is going to go into 39 19 times. And we're going to have 1 half left over. So we're going to take that 19 and 1 half. And we're going to add it in here as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stack all of these numbers. I would recommend starting um, with that 10 and a half and the ah, I would recommend starting with the 10 and a half and the 19 and a half and adding those two together first. Um, so we know that one half plus one half is going to give us one whole. And then if I take 10 plus 19, that's going to give me 29. So 29 plus one is going to be 30. I'm going to take my 30 and I'm going to add um, in my eight and my 35. So we can take this plus 35. 30 plus 35 is going to give us um, 65, and then we want to take that 8 and add that in. 65 plus 8 is going to be 73. So the total amount of grams is going to be 73 grams. So 73 grams. Um, and I know that obviously this is not the most ideal way to be looking at a problem like this, um, but you know it's hard for me to write out all these problems with a mouse on my computer. So um, because this is kind of an old strategy that we've been working on and we know how to add together um, 
fractions. It's just kind of a quick way for you to see what it is that you need to do in order to solve this problem. So on number four, it says, how many grams of salt would be left if two of each container were used? So basically on this problem, um, we want to kind of just double the amount. So basically, instead of there being um, seven dots here, there would be 14. Instead of two, there would be four. Instead of three, there'd be six. Instead of five, there'd be 10. Um, so basically, you're just doubling every single thing that you're doing. So if you're doubling your dots, you're basically doubling your answer. Um, so you could take 73 times um, plus 73, or you could take 73 times two because either one of those ways is going to get you the correct answer. Um, and I know if I take 73 plus 73, um, and I can stack those on top of each other and we can add them together. So three plus three is going to give us six. And then seven plus seven is going to give us 14, which gives us a total of 146 grams. Um, because we're just doubling. Um, and either one, remember, we can do repeated addition or we can do multiplication. They both give us the same answer. All right, so um, you're going to be doing number five and number six on your own on this paper using the line plot that's given to you. Um, this one's great because it already has all of the quantities listed for you. Um, but I do want to remind that, again, when you are doing multiplication of mixed numbers, you have to turn it into an improper fraction. Um, so basically, you're going to take that denominator, multiply it by the whole number. So this would be 8 times 12. Um, and then you're going to take that product and add it to 5. And that becomes your numerator. And then your denominator is still the same. Another thing that's really important, um, when you're adding these quantities together, you want to make sure you have a common denominator. Um, so on number 5, it says write an equation for the total amount of string. Um, you're not only just writing an equation, but you're also solving the equation. Um, so just kind of as a reminder of starting this one out, you're going to look at the number that has dots above it, that smallest number, um, and you're going to do 12 and 5 eighths. And it's going to be multiplied by however many dots are above it, which is 2. Then you're going to add that to the next number, do the same thing, add it to the next number. Um, but then you want to make sure before you actually add these that you turn them into mixed number, or I'm sorry, improper fractions, um, and then you have common denominators before you actually add. Number six, what is the difference in length between the longest and shortest um, strings? This is where you're going to kind of focus on this question number one. Um, by taking the largest amount with um, dots above it and finding the difference between that and the smallest um, amount with dots above it. Um, let's take a look at the next page. So flipping to page 41. Um, number seven, write and solve an equation for the total amount of rainfall R, Susanna recorded. So R is going to be your answer. Um, so you're writing the equation kind of like what we did here. We wrote out the equation with a variable. Um, and then we actually solved it. So that's what you're going to be doing here. But instead of using G, you're going to be using R. Um, and again, these all have numbers um, below them. So you don't have to try and figure it out. And then on this one, suppose the same amount of rain fell the following week, but the same, um, um, but the same amount of rain fell each day, how much rain fell in each day. Um, so basically on this one, you're going to be looking and seeing how many dots you have, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so you're going to take that amount um, the amount here. So you're going to be getting an answer. So you can't do number eight until you do number seven. You're going to be taking your answer for number seven. Um, 
And then we're going to be breaking that answer and we're going to be breaking it into how many days there are um, because that's really important. Um, so the same amount of rain fell the following week. So we're focusing on a different week, but it's the exact same amount of numbers. Um, and we want to know that what amount of rain fell each day if it was the same amount. Um, so if we're breaking our answer into equal parts, um, I want you to think about what that operation would be. We're breaking into equal parts. So we're taking an amount and we're breaking it into smaller equal parts. Um, so you're going to want to use your answer for number seven to solve number eight by breaking it into seven equal parts. On number nine, it says the area of a square deck is 81 square feet. So the area, we already know what the area is. It says how long is each side of the deck? Think about a square. A square has what? What is, um, what's important about a square? They all have, um, all sides are what? Um, so answer that question. All sides are what on a square? And that's going to help you solve this problem um, because your area, we know when we're finding area, it's going to be um, length times width equals, and we know that it equals 81. Um, so you basically want to take that 81 and do what with it to figure out each of these sides. Um, Remember, this is our answer. So we don't want our answer to get bigger. We want it to get smaller. Um, so think about kind of what that opposite operation would be um, in order to figure this out. Um, so length times width means both of these sides are going to be something. I want you to think about what I'm trying to share with you. Um, and then how could you use these these sides to solve this problem. Remember, it's not the perimeter, so we're not using all of the sides. It's just important to know that each side is the blank. Um, so really make sure that you're focusing on maybe this as your length, this as your width, um, and you're only using these two sides, okay? Um, because you want to make sure if you're checking your work that you take this number times this number and it gives you this. Um, because we're not finding the perimeter. So if this times this does not give you 81, then you want to double check your work. Um, on number 10, it did not print correctly. It's really hard to see um, those numbers. So if you're unable to do this problem because on your paper it maybe didn't print very well, um, you do not have to do number 10. Um, but if you if you're able to kind of see those numbers um, and you'd like to attempt it, feel free. Um, I know that on my printed copy, I'm unable to see them. So um, just go ahead and cross off number 10 if your paper is the same. Um, and then on number 11, it says, Kurt recorded the amount of snowfall in each month for one year. Um, what was the total snowfall that year? So total snowfall means that we wanna know how much total these dots um, give us. So we're not necessarily adding up each of these dots. We're adding up the quantity below each dot. So we have one here. So this would be one times three. This is one half. So one half times two, one fourth times one, zero times three. Um, so you want to make sure you're finding the quantity as a whole, not just how many dots there are. All right, so I know that this one is kind of a lot. It's a pretty heavy um, concept, um, and this video is much longer than any of the other ones. So please, please, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, um, because I know that this is a little bit um, more difficult of a concept, but I would really recommend that you have this assignment completed in its entirety before we meet um, on Tuesday for our Zoom meeting at 11, um, because I really wanna make sure that we go over some of these questions together, um, because I know that it is a little bit more challenging. So please make sure that you're jotting down any questions, circle questions that you wanna talk about on Tuesday during our Zoom meeting, um, so that we're able to really um, kind of digress this together 
and um, work on it together as well. So um, today for your homework, after you've watched this entire video and after you've completed this entire assignment, please go to Pearson Realize and complete the assignment um, as 42420 Quick Check. Um, I've also attached the video um, to that assignment, um, but I will also um, encourage you, you know, to rewind this video um, and watch it, um, watch it on here as well if you're unable to watch it on Pearson Realize. 